So this is Subaru's biggest offering. This is, if you want a big Indeed. car from Subaru, this is where you wind up, the Subaru Ascent. It is their largest car they've ever built. SUV, car, monster truck. It's like the monster truck of Subarus. And you know, let's be honest, that's what Subaru has always been known for, is ground clearance. Kind of the off-road, you can do True, stuff yeah. that other SUVs and other cars can't really do. You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. I'm doing that odd thing. I'm currently shifting a CVT. This is a CVT, of course it is, but it, it actually lists everywhere in the Subaru materials. They have picked eight ratios for you to shift yourself with paddles. There's really very few things in this market segment that offer shifting. Of course, I'm shifting made up ratios it's in the midst shifting. of a CVT. I am fake shifting, trying to get some engagement out of this because this is a classic CVT. I will say the thing I'm most surprised by in the dynamics of this is this has surprisingly quick steering. The steering's are like alert. It's, it's, it's like hyper ready to alert do something. Alert steering. Well, yes. I wouldn't expect that on this. And anytime I do any kind of corner, it has very alert steering. And then here I am. You know, honestly, it's the only... Wait, wait, wait. I, sh wait. I should go out. I should go out. I should go back to CVT and just let it do its thing. Here we go. It is sitting. We are accelerating. So it's just <laughs> it just picks an RPM and you go faster. And it never changes. Yeah. This is this is a textbook CVT, continuously variable transmission. It stands to reason that at some point in the distant future when we have flying cars, they might have been figured out where they are now <laughs> engaging to drive. This one is only engaging to drive because you can put it in manual mode and pull the paddles. Otherwise, it is a fantastic execution of a boring technology. I'll take that as a compliment. We're talking about design. We're talking about executing products with good research behind the products, how they're built, how they're designed. That really manifests itself and you can tell whatever the product is and cars are just big expensive products mm -hmm. made up of a lot of little pieces and mm -hmm. are products in and of themselves. But you can tell when something really nails it. And I do like cars and SUVs and trucks that when they nail a market segment by virtue of going after and meeting the needs of what the, they're going after, the market sure, they're going yeah. after, I do appreciate that. Because Todd and I are enthusiast drivers. This particular car is not really an enthusiast driver's car, but it's going after a particular market need, which is families, yes. Yes. explicitly stated by Subaru. And that's our mindset for coming to this because as we've stated, it's the biggest thing Subaru has built so far. Mm -hmm. Maybe it gets bigger than this, but it's a monster truck. Yeah. <laughs> the secret party trick here is ground clearance. That's the thing that Subaru has always been known for from mm -hmm. the original, the legacies, the wagons, to the Brat. It's always the car you could kind of take off road and yeah. bounce a little bit further down the trail than your average car, SUV, truck, whatever it is. It's not meant to be a rock crawler. No. Who goes rock crawling with seven or eight people in the car? Nobody only the that people I know. on those tours with the Hummers and the stadium Okay, seating. maybe those, those the people. That they do it. Yeah, but that's yeah, yeah. specifically designed. Mm -hmm. This is designed. If you've got kayaks on the roof, and the trail is just a little bit dirtier and muddier and rockier than kind of typical, and you think, all right, let's go for it. You've got the ground clearance to do that. Specifically, the number is 8.7 inches. Mm -hmm. And I went after all the competitors. Yep. I went after the Highlander and the Pilot and the Explorer and the Volkswagen Atlas. And I looked at the ground clearance of all these other sort of, yeah. Yeah. I can do a little bit more than you think kinds of trucks. The Ascent is the most. Mm -hmm. And that's not the most by that much, but it does matter. And a little bit is kind of the difference between tearing your undercarriage out and not. It's almost an inch worth of more ground clearance than something like the Telluride, for example. Yes, Telluride as well. They're all eight, some are a little bit yep. under eight, Yep. but 8.7 is the most. And so that's what contributes to the little bit higher look to it. True. But that's the trade-off is True. Subaru is encouraging us as buyers, you as buyers, to go further down the path, go mm -hmm. more. Well, that married with their all-wheel drive system, their symmetrical all-wheel drive system that's in everything that they offer. Yes. That's here too. In spite of that CVT, this still has yep. that great all-wheel drive system that Subaru is known for that, let's be honest, 
is pretty much better than anything else on the market yeah. in this segment. I mean, this isn't a heavy duty, you know, you're gonna, you can tow 5,000 pounds, which is decent, but that's pretty much everybody else in the segment. But most of the other competitors, if you get them at a lower trim level, you're in front wheel drive only. This is Subaru, it's always all wheel drive. Interestingly, because it's got that all wheel drive, it's got hill descent control too, which is mm -hmm. also telling me, take it down that hill. Totally. You think you can go over that berm and it looks yep. a little bit scarier than yep. you would usually do? You've got the ascent. No problem, let's go, let's take Give it. Give it a shot, yeah. It's in inherent with the Subaru brand and mm -hmm. the image. Here we go. Here's the power. A 2.4 liter boxer engine, mm -hmm. making 260 horsepower, 277 foot-pounds of torque. Yes. This is kind of in the middle of where its competitors are. Absolutely. But as Todd was talking about, the CVT. It has a CVT that allows it to tow 5,000 pounds. A CVT, 5,000 pounds. You look at others and they might be the same or a little bit better, but they're automatic transmission. You're seeing eight they're and nine speeds and that kind of thing mostly in this segment. Super's committed CVT. to this CVT. Big here. time. Well, this engine and this transmission are in mm -hmm. a lot of their lineup right now. I mean, this is yeah. this engine yeah. with this power output, a CVT with the manual option, manual option. Those are all things that you can Fake find shifting. through all of their stuff. This is, though, more than just what I thought it was, which was a uh, jacked up Outback. The Outback, by I the like way, has gotten Outback. enormous. The Outback's gotten, the Outback is bigger than whatever you think it is. I guarantee you it's, it's big. It's large. But this is a yes. full seven seater and dimensions wise, this trade, like who's got the extra tenths of an inch versus the Telluride. We really like the Telluride. Now yep. the only place the Telluride yeah, that I found is definitely bigger than this is behind the third row for storage. We have a third row up the Telluride yeah, has it does storage. Win in that Because it brags it having the most storage yeah. pretty much in the segment. But the Traverse is the actual big boy of the segment as far as sheer space. Okay. It okay. is bigger than this. But this, the Telluride has got a lot of space. This has got almost yeah. the exact same amount of space as the Telluride in every measurement. And I have to be honest, when I walked up to it when I got into it, I didn't think so. Until I started playing around a little bit, looking at the numbers, it's almost identical to the Telluride in space. It does have a higher ride height. It also feels like you're higher, just the way this seat is. You do have great visibility. The visibility that is, is one thing phenomenal. You do. Yeah, I do. And agree as with I that. said before, I'm quite surprised at how abrupt, and I actually mean that in a good way, the, the steering is. It's very alert. Everything that families look for that a car needs to do can be found here. True. Some cars do it a little bit more luxuriously or feel better mm -hmm. or feel more engineered or whatever in that category. But for the most part, you're looking for something for your family. You don't want a minivan because minivans are not going to go down the kayak path. They're not going to go down the canoe route. <laughs> but you want something that can do the off-road, all-wheel drive. The Ascent is hard to overlook. And I think Subaru knows that. It's been very carefully positioned for every feature that you want. Yeah. From check the rear seat reminder to you know, geofencing around the car to a yeah. Wi-Fi hotspot. Mm -hmm. Every possible safety feature. It's got the Subaru EyeSight. The camera's right here. Yep. It just seems like every little tiny safety feature that they could pack onto a car, everything that you want. And they, they go a little bit further. A good example is when you open the rear door and there's a step mm -hmm. beyond just the threshold where you get into the rear seat, there's another step that says, step here to get into the third row. They know it's going to get muddy and dirty and yeah. beat up You're and right. ding. Right. Yeah, yeah. And they actually kind of made it. This is how you get into the car. Place foot here, yes. Most Mars cars don't have that. True. Should they put so a little, little no-step, little military no-step spray paint everywhere else? Should we do that like they have on wings? Can we get, get that on there? <laughs> Maybe on the cladding because kids, you know, they will step They'll on step things everywhere. that They'll step everywhere. shouldn't be yeah. stepped on. The thing is that Subaru clearly looked at the market segment and said, we don't have any, something in that segment. They had the Tribeca for a while. You remember that? That's that what was, this, this used to kind of yeah, be. Yeah, so the Tribeca morphed. died and now yeah. this is a Thankfully. real. Because the Tribeca was like a, a half measure. It's like a half step into this market segment. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't quite a minivan, but it had some minivan features. It wasn't quite a full seven seat off road. Really it was, it was to they? This is a full, we want to be in this segment. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's what it is. It's a solid effort in this segment that has then got Subaru features. And I want to talk about that more. The big thing I've been pondering about Subaru is for the last like five, six years, they have had year-on-year -year growth. 
Subaru okay. has been exploding in this country. Yeah. And I actually yeah. think that they have done a good job, and I'm sure it was intentional, but I don't know that all of us have thought about it. I think they've replaced Volvo in the minds of most people as you buy a Subaru for safety. This car beeps and shudders and alerts you about everything you do yeah. to the point of being annoying. Now, you can look at that two ways. On one level, it's going to keep you as safe as possible. On another level, thank God you can turn some of those things off. I but hear you. Subaru is very that. much concerned with the safety factor, and that I think they are selling with the all-wheel drive because we all we've talked before about the all fact wheel that drive means there's safety. an impression that all-wheel drive just means safety. I'll never come unglued. Yes. Yeah, exactly. All-wheel drive as a Subaru thing, matched with eyesight and all these safety features. I think Subaru is selling safety first and foremost, which I like, and it's important actually Speaking to compete. Of, true. Well, and I think from a safety perspective, they are competing or in most cases actually surpassing their competitors in sheer safety. However, in the effort to do everything, they also got a little weird. <laughs> there's a little bit of overkill going on. Okay, there, there's plenty of places. I'm trying to see if I could explain this without ranting. There's plenty of... I probably will fail. I'm just, I'm just going to try to like... There's plenty of places where... A car maker will say, here's a feature that we have. But it's not necessarily on the Monroney, the, the sales certificate thing. On the Monroney, Subaru brags that the Ascent, which is a seven-passenger car, has 19 cup holders. That's a lot. And I read that, and it's on the Monroney as a feature. And I thought, 19 cup holders? That's I'm not good at math, but what are seven people doing in 19 beverages? So, I got nuts. And I went to my garage and I got a flat of those mini waters and I just thought, let me see how many I can put in this car. Because I wasn't sure that 19 was right. And you know what? I was wrong. It's not 19. We got 23 waters in separate cup holders in this car. 23 waters. That is, every person is drinking three things and you have cubbies left over for phones. This is madness. They're up on the door by the window. They're down at the bottom of the door. 23 water bottles in here right now. Which only proves it proves the, the you, attention to uh, detail for what shoppers are looking for. We've joked for years, oh, well, it's got 82 cup holders. 23? 23 waddles and bottles of water. You, you could actually, like, like, keep a wagon train hydrated with this car. That's it's, three it's one drinks per person if you've got the seven-passenger configuration. To me, that tells me Subaru has gone after the market and actually tested and had families <laughs> and used it in real world situations and road trips because that is what this is for. It's road trips, it's carting the family around, it's getting out for fun. So if cup holders indeed is your thing, welcome <laughs> to your ascent. Welcome to this. This is it. Ascend to more ascend cup holders. Ascend to. That's where we're going. To quenching your thirst. This has got, look, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It's got this huge Lots panoramic sunroof. This is coming in at 43 grand. Yeah. Which I have to it's give pretty, Subaru pretty kudos loaded. there because when we've driven, recently we've driven the uh, Telluride and the Palisade and the Highlander, which we personally think are probably the top three in this 7 I do love segment. them for hitting their targets however, too. However, however, those are between 48 and 50 grand loaded. Yeah. This, you can get a little more loaded than this with a little more leather than this has essentially what the difference is. And that one would be probably yep. 45, 46, so it's still lower. But this has just about everything in this limited edition because they added the Harman Kardon stereo and it also added this uh, this huge panoramic sunroof. 43 yeah. grand. This is affordable, especially considering there's not a box to check of, oh, it got more expensive because it went all-wheel drive. Which is the party trick. This the is the all, benefits all drive. of the Ascent. Because you think... Well, Subaru wants in on this market, too. Yeah. And they do. But they did it specifically focused on the things that will matter and are the tipping points to people. Speaking of tipping point, it is the steering that is really tippy. I don't know that it needs to be this quick. It's a 13 and a half steering ratio mm -hmm. to one, and it, it's spry, and I think, all right. Yeah. I, I like the turn-in, not on such a big car. Well, it doesn't need to be here. Because the steering, like I was saying before, the steering no. dives and the body goes, whoa, I'm really big, and tries to follow. <laughs> That's the problem. Leading. Maybe it's like a game. Maybe, Maybe it, can, it is. You know, it's... when the kids are bored and they've watched everything? Yeah. <laughs> Other things I want to ponder here, I personally prefer the seat feel and the luxury of the 
the Highlander, the Telluride, the Palisade. I prefer being in those. I agree. I agree. They are more expensive. Now, on the upper trim, you're also all-wheel drive. I prefer being in those. I think the seats are better. This this seat has the the thigh bolster thing the driver for the seat driver. Does. Yes, but it's great. the amount of seat it leaves behind is tiny. Yeah, it's kind of a little weird. The back doors, the rear doors on this. I'm not a guy that normally talks about doors. That's normally your department. But I'm, I'm usually talk the door doors. guy. The rear doors are enormous and they're very heavy. They're heavy to the point that yeah. I don't think kids can open these doors themselves. Now, maybe that's not an issue. Maybe your kids are small enough you're only opening them. But, but honestly... My kids I, work out. I get, it, seriously, I, <laughs> they can just work with the door. <laughs> give, them about, give them six weeks. They'll be, they'll be all about it. <laughs> but the thing is, these doors are really, really heavy to the point that I noticed... My wife noticed. My son actually struggled with one because really? he did that thing where, where it went out and then he reached to grab it and it was just, I mean, he's 10. Yes, he's also used to dad's Lotus doors. He, well, just yes, insane. but I also have a Volkswagen Phaeton. One more note about the doors is they open wider than you think. <laughs> the better to ding the car next to you. Yes. So the kids finally do put all yes. their weight behind the door. They can really, you know, get that car next to you. They throw their entire body weight to get it open. You can really yeah. gouge that car next to you because it swings way out. On the yeah. other hand, everybody can get in and with that step that shows you where to step to get into the third row <laughs> they're making it easy now you have to park you know like a space and a half and you're going to have to be that person that takes the space but i'm just saying the doors open wide so every little thing subaru is thinking about the usage mm-hmm. and the interior that you could nearly hose out when you're done with all the sticky candy and kid goo <laughs> everywhere you could almost hose this interior out yeah it's got very it's interesting robust uh, formats in here yep. it is but think about the price and the competitors, as Todd said, the competitors bring a higher level. Yes. But that's okay. That's totally okay. This is yeah. going to get filthy in yeah. here. It's going to get beat on and it's going to last, which is what I like. It doesn't feel luxurious. And it almost, no. you know, when, once you get this 45, 50 grand, I feel like you kind of want that. It doesn't feel luxurious, but it has that, and I, I mean this as a compliment, it has that utilitarian feel that all Subarus have in now a larger package. You haven't shopped yeah. luxury. You shopped Subaru, all-wheel drive, and safety. This is the offering. A note about the CVT, and that is when you're pushing on the gas and you're going up a hill, it can't decide. It doesn't know. It hunts back and forth and drops down. No, no, this is not right. A little bit further, nope, nope, that's not right either. And it hunts, and it's really annoying. Yeah. And this is why I don't like CVTs. But on the other hand, if it's robust and it you know, is less expensive to manufacture and all the reasons that Subaru chose it. Okay. But I think also I want to say this, the thing about a CVT is for drivers other than us. You and I like immediate response. CVTs aren't designed for that. If you do what I did earlier, you put your foot at one setting on the gas pedal and don't ask anything else. You just put it at a place. Mm -hmm. Then the CVT is fine because it goes, oh, that's this well, RPM. Well, sometimes I've done that and it doesn't. It still mm. like hunts around well, because I'm on a slight hill. Hills. And then I get the hills, turbo. Hills are the bane I'm of a CVT. A little existence. bit into the yes. turbo and then suddenly we're going. The CVT is, no, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Nope. We'll slow that down. Easy there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The ascent, it's a solid choice. I'm with you. It's very solid. There's others I would choose personally. Agreed. Agreed. But there is nothing you can throw at this that will be, you know, oh, it doesn't do this right because you come back to the price. And you have Subaru going, uh, we offer a seven-seater for the people that want to buy a seven-seat Subaru. Done.